the way we get taught empathy as babies is we actually mimic our parents' facial expressions. So, you know, we're doing like the tongue sticking out and all this kind of crazy stuff. We're mimicking and we're building up that empathy muscle. When we're having conversations like every day as a healthy person, you know, that has that level of empathy, we mimic. So if I'm telling like a really sad story, like, oh my gosh, I lost my job and this, that and the other, and it's so terrible, we're gonna see that person empathizing straight away. You know, start seeing that. But with narcissists, you will not see that empathy straight away. Or if they're highly intelligent, which often, you know, have people in very high powered positions like lawyers and all those, you know, CEOs and all these big power play positions, they, they're often a little bit more intelligent. So they will mimic, but there's a way of finding out if there is a genuine facial expression or not. And it's the way that the expression leaves the face. So if the expression leaves very gradually, so if you're smiling, you're not suddenly going, oh no, I'm not smiling anymore. <laughs> you know, we don't do that. Um, uh, and it's the same if we're really sad. We don't suddenly go, oh gosh, that's terrible. Oh, do you want a cup of tea? You know, we don't suddenly switch and change. And that can be a very good way to actually see if someone has that level of empathy. And if someone's narcissistic, it, that's going to happen consistently. And that's really important to know. You know, sometimes you might be a little bit checked out of a, co of a conversation, but in a narcissistic relationship, you're going to see that consistently. There's never going to be that level of empathy there. I love that. And it tracks with what we know about nonverbal signaling. Because again, all of this is chemical reactions happening in your body, and those chemical reactions are slow burn. They don't just shut off immediately. So of course, these expressions aren't going to leave your face. Another point that I recognize in, in past experiences and I look for now is the rationalization that happens when the person they meet, it could be a server, a staff member, someone that they consider has slighted them in any way, has not seen them in the light that they want you to see them in, they will come up with very over-the-top stories, explanations, and victimhood at the slightest inclination that they might be not seen in the way that they want you to see them. So I've seen overreactions to waiters and waitresses around their behavior. And again, it's coming from the fact that they live their entire life having to save this face, to keep this mask on, that they are this perfect, amazing person. And it can be very hard for you to see through that mask, but if you pay close attention to how they treat others and overreactions to any slights that are felt, someone cutting them off, someone not being respectful of them. You know, these are things that most of us just shrug off. Like maybe every once in a while it'll get stuck in your craw because you've had a really bad day. But if they're reacting over the top repeatedly to the slights that just go about living your life on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, that's what I've tuned into more than ever is how you treat anyone is how you treat everyone. And as Johnny said, what they will do is if they can't wow your friends, if they can't get your friends to believe that they are as charismatic as they are, they immediately start to rationalize your friends as being the bad actors and start telling you stories of why you shouldn't be spending time with that person, they're a bad person, because they know that that person is seen behind their mask.